Adventures in DeFi Kingdoms. Number one used tool, probably, I would say. It's probably a toss up. There's some lots of good tools. Phenomenal developers in this project, in this ecosystem. It's amazing. I'm gonna go do a quick, brief run through of Adventures in DeFi Kingdoms and why I think everyone who's serious in the game should, with absolute no questions asked, no brainer, become a paid subscriber of this. So we all know here in this hero data spot right here, okay, that's free to all of us. This is the most used thing, like in the game, almost, right? I, I'm imagining D DFK Questers coming up on that, Born to Die 007. This, OGs here, we got Raf and Nindorf. These guys are phenomenal. They also have, as you saw here on their home screen, go join their Discord. They're doing all kinds of things. These guys are awesome. I love these guys. Okay, so first of all, when you come here, you set up an account. It's in the description below. Set up, you go to the account and you can put in a certain amount of crystal. Okay, so let's just see real quick. We put in 50 crystal, you hit calculate. It tells you, okay, that's currently worth $13.65 and it equals 23 days of access. Just 23 days for 50 crystal. Then you go to 100 crystal. Calculate. 1.73 months, that's $27. If you did 1,000 crystal, okay, that's too much. Don't need to do 1,000. Let's do 250. Calculate. $68, 6.7 months. Okay. If you were to do, okay. So if you pony up 68 bucks, you don't have to worry about this for 6.7 more months. But look at this. It just keeps going up exponentially. You put in 500, 500 will get you 26 months. So 250 was about seven months. 500 crystal, 26 months. Okay, so and that's a, that is $136. You're basically paid up, you know, for two and a half, or, you know, over two years. You don't even have to think about this. Okay, so here's what you get. We all use the hero data part. Okay, when you come home, we all use this hero data part. For one, you get tavern alerts. Okay, and you can, if I want to buy a Mythic Dread Knight, for example, and I don't utilize this nearly as much as I should, but anything that you want that pops up in the tavern with any types of traits, abilities, anything you want, you can get notified and it's easy to set up. You can get notified on Discord. Okay, anytime that hero pops up in a tavern. That's a paid service. Hero matching. This is a big one. Okay, let's say you own, for example, this Gen, uh, Gen Zero, 1692. You can search for rent, or you can search against all the heroes within your own wallet, which I have lots of heroes. So I use this religiously, this tool. And I don't know what I would do without this tool, honestly. So, you know, I put in, a, like, I think this is a Gen Zero, put this guy in and I do for rent. This will search all the heroes in the tavern for me. And then you can do, like in this case, I'm only gonna want a Gen Zero, max generation, men generation zero. You can also do men abilities that can mutate. Okay, and that's big for what I've been looking for, right? We're trying to get those advanced, elite, transcendent abilities, heroes with those abilities, right? Which we don't see in the hero. Like you have to use this tool uh, and other tools like now DFK Quester shows that info as well, but you can't like search the tavern for that necessarily. Or maybe you can, maybe like the tools just keep getting better and better than the ecosystem. And let's say, for example, you click none and this, let's just say this guy's a warrior. So you're looking for a knight, Gen Zero in the tavern, you hit view. It's gonna show all the night Gen Zeros in the tavern. And when you scroll down, you click rent, it'll bring the cheapest ones up. See, these are highlighted right here. These are the ones that can mutate, the abilities that can mutate right here. 
So, like in this case, not a whole lot, not a whole lot. In this case, with this specific hero, right, so I'd probably just go with this one, because it's the cheapest. It's Rare Knight Monk. We're just assuming that's a warrior. I don't know what that is, actually. I, I did one earlier, a warrior, that matched with a knight with three abilities that can mutate, and boom, one of them hit. So I have a Gen 1, 10 out of 10, with an advanced ability. That's awesome. That's hard to get. Okay, those are invaluable. So, and this goes for anything. So let's say I want to trim down the search, right? And it's, we're not looking for Gen Zeros, for example. Okay, and this is key. You can do min abilities that mutate one, two, whatever. Let's see if there's any with two. This is Gen Zeros. Again, I don't normally do this with Gen Zeros, but there's a ton of heroes available in the tavern. No, nope, there wasn't any particular Gen Zeros. So you'd have to do one. And then it would only show the heroes that have at least one ability that can mutate. This, this is such a game changer. No brainer. Okay, then other things he's developing okay so he's growing uh dfk fight club i still haven't even looked at this myself right so he's developing a tool to help with fight club dfk tournaments this is a big one too he's developing a tool that he kind of wants to be the main go-to in organizing tournaments such as fight club tournaments combat corner uh tavern data so looking to price a hero Right? So you can... I don't even use... The, I know there's awesome aspects of this tool. But also where I just live in all the time, this pet data. The Unbridged Pet Catalog. Interesting. And the tavern data looking to price a hero. I'll, I need to check that out. I'm not looking to buy a whole lot of heroes, though, anymore. That's why I never use that. But the market data, guys... So this is also paid service. So you can compare, right? First of all, it's nice because this is always the most accurate jewel price, much better than the coin gecko price and stuff. And this kind of tells you, like for example, you got shimmer skin. And this tells you that when it's in green, you know that it's okay to go to the vendor and sell it for gold if you're looking to sell it, right? And it also just tells you the price of gold, which is way down. Tells you the 24 hour, 6 hour, 1 hour, 5 minute pricing of these items. Okay. And however, when you see something like milkweed, it's always in red. Right? Because it's always way better to sell that on the trader than it is with the vendor for gold. And you know that when it's in red. Even though it's down 8.4%. Okay, but it's you never want to go sell milkweed with the vendor. You always want to sell that with the trader because of the stamina potions that milkweed helps create. And that's the most common potion used in the game for people to stamp pot their heroes to level them up faster. And that will especially pop when contests come. Okay, but at times you'll see shimmer skins up. You'll see different things. Sailfish, which you can only buy at the vendor right now or with the trader. Um, but you can compare and contrast different items so you can you, when it's in green it's actually good to go to the trader to buy it uh, when it's in red you want to sell it on the trader I mean that depending on the price fluctuations different things big part of the tool and I love this this is also where you get your pricing for crystals stones different things in the game uh, and eggs, all kinds of things. It's all on here. So here's eggs. Kind of tells you, whoa, yellow eggs are popping. Okay. Wonder if something's going. I wonder if we're going to get some alpha, some news coming. But all the eggs are up today. Interesting. So it's good to follow this, right, in the market. Here's also what's awesome about this. You come to the market data. Alchemy receipts. So you can compare... The market price with the trader of stamina potions versus how much it costs in items to craft the stamina potions. And it just tells you. You don't have to do any math, figure I actually did the math one time and Raph like immediately calls me and he's like, we gotta do a video. He's shown me all this. Okay. This is also true. Back to the market data. This is where I live the most. And also the, the hero matching. Carving receipts. 
the carving receipts is big. So this is the market for a lesser chaos stone versus what it will be to craft when the stone carver comes. No brainer. So look, we, we've kind of seen these come up. That's good. We've got the stone carver coming. So you can play, you know, you can really help your ROI with all these things if you play this right. So right now it's cheaper, you know, you, I mean, it's more expensive than to craft. So you want to be selling. Oh, look at the swiftness stone. So if you have lots of swiftness stones saved up and you wait for this to pop, you can sell the stones and then wait to craft later. Hold your items, craft. That's one way you can arbitrage, make money. Vigor stone. This is the market. You can sell it for seven and a half jewel. When the cost and crafting and the value of all the items, like these potions and different things, it's 4.9 jewel to craft, right? So you can sell it. And, and the, like I've seen these go up over 15, 20 jewel before. Quite a bit more because the stone carver comes and goes. Lesser wit stone. And this is where a lot of the awesome opportunities pop up. So, but I'm always just taking a quick peek at what the market's doing. Sometimes you get some good arbitrage opportunities, but a lot of those have gone away. I think people are more onto this. Used to be drastic at times, but hey, sometimes I'll still catch it. Like just yesterday, these th this three-eyed eel w was in red 27%. So boom, I, w I just happened to notice it, went and sold them. So you'll, you'll just see different fluctuations that happen within the market. This is why I think I'm happy, more than happy to help Nindorf, baby. We got to get Nindorf. I would love to see Nindorf, full-time developer, not have a nine to five job. He's got a good job. So it'd probably take a lot to get him not to do that, but would love to see that. I love you fam. DeFi Kingdoms. Like, subscribe, bell button. Leave a comment. I love it. Crypto Grady out.